Everyone has experienced a time where they felt disoriented or in an unfamiliar place. I remember what that was like for me. I slowly turned my head to the left. I saw IV bags filled with fluids bumping into my left arm. Then I slowly turned my head to the right, and guess what I saw? More IV bags. Finally, I turned back center and was staring at white squares in the ceiling. How did I get here? Life comes at you fast when you're waking up for major surgery and your whole body hurts. You start doing your own post-op inspections. Fingers, check. Then you go to wiggle your toes. Toes, check. In May of 2011, I was 15 years old. I had just finished my sophomore year of high school. All my friends were thinking beach days or basketball games at the park. I was thinking about whether or not I would walk again. The surgery was a lumbar spinal fusion to correct my severe case of scoliosis. Dealing with something to that scale is never easy, and it takes a village. My parents bathed me, fed me, drove me around, and picked up prescriptions, which helped me overcome the physical barriers. But my mother's awareness for the importance of clothing and how that can affect someone's mood is ultimately what helped me heal far after the surgical wounds were shut. My mom was a tailor, and the sewing machine was her golden child. My sisters and I weren't able to touch it. Knowing us, we would have broken it, and that never ends well in a Haitian household. <laughs> Most people woke up to the smell of coffee. My sisters and I woke up to the humming of my mom's sewing machine. We'd always ask, why is she at that machine so early? But those mornings, I would watch her do her magic at the sewing machine, which essentially led to my fascination with fabrics and patterns. And inadvertently, it saved my life. Style is deeply connected to a person's sense of confidence. I watched her carefully tailor different looks for her clients. They would come into the house with some wardrobe malfunction, sometimes crying. But once the work was done, they were leaving a lot happier after seeing their garment done far greater than their expectations. My father also understood the role that style plays in self-confidence. My first time at an airport, I was with my dad, and we were dressed up to the nines. I'm telling y'all, we were fresh. <laughs> and at the time, I didn't understand what he was threading into my mind. He was walking through the airport in his super suit with his chest out, head held high, confident in himself. If only I could emulate my father's confidence by looking in the mirror and being happy with the man on the other side. Style helped me find my path to feeling good in my own skin. Deion Sanders said it best. If you look good, you feel good. You feel good, you play good. And if you play good, they pay good. Yeah. <laughs> we must change our outlook on style. It can be a healing tool. It influences mental health and confidence. What we wear is who we are and how we express ourselves. There are many studies on how clothing affects how we think, from the colors we choose to the actual item itself. Your style has the power to transform your life. Most people think style is frivolous or superficial. This mindset fails to acknowledge that style can be a vehicle for hope. It can help you create a new image for yourself. Let's say when you get your first tailored suit, right? Or your first pair of Jordans. And for some, even the validation of a varsity jacket, you obtain this new glow, and it shows. One of the most notable examples of this phenomenon can be seen amongst the Congo dandies. The origins of the Congo dandies can be traced back to Congo's colonial era, when young Congolese men adopted the styles of their masters and modified it into their own. Their goal is to create a new image of themselves, right? In the face of poverty, corruption, and civil war, these men may appear as high-powered businessmen. They have found something refreshing and carefree in which they could take immense pride. What on the outside might simply look like dressing up brings a sense of meaning to their lives that not much else can. They are a source of positivity and inspiration within their local communities through conversation, dance, and friendly competition. Creating your own style is empowering because style not only affects yourself, but those around you as well. This is something that Nike understood to the most significant degree. They partnered with the Dornbecker Children's Hospital for the Dornbecker Freestyle Nike Partnership. In this partnership, 
Selected patients are able to design limited edition sneakers, and all the proceeds go to the hospital. Nike then allows these kids to wear their own sneaker designs as a way to share their stories and raise awareness on the conditions they are living with. This opens up a world of artistic expression. Here, we see style as a form of medicine and a tool for storytelling. But style's relationship with treatment goes deeper than raising money or awareness. There's an actual science to this. In clothed cognition, a term coined by Dr. Hajo Adam and Dr. Adam Galinsky from Northwestern University, relates the effect of clothing to a person's mental process. And how we think, feel, and function in areas like attention, confidence, or abstract thinking. They had two sets of volunteers in their initial study. One group was instructed to wear a white lab coat. The second group was instructed to dress casually. The participants were next given a selective attention test, which assessed their abilities to identify inconsistencies. Now get this. Those in the white lab coats made nearly half as many mistakes as those in street clothing. So in a subsequent study, Adam and Galinsky gathered three sets of individuals to test for heightened attention. One group was instructed to wear a doctor's coat. Second group was instructed to wear a painter's coat. The third group was instructed to briefly examine the doctor's coat on a table in front of them when they first entered. The coats of the doctor and of the painter were identical. After that, each group was given four visual search tasks to complete. Each time they looked at a pair of comparable photographs, they had to find four minor differences and write them down as fast as possible. Well, those in the doctor's coat discovered more differences than those in the painter's coat or those who were primed to look at the doctor's coat. This indicated that those who were wearing the doctor's coat were paying closer attention to detail. When we ascribe symbolic meaning to an article of clothing and wear it, that piece has a measurable effect. Adam and Galinsky claim that the influence of clothing depends on both wearing the said article of clothing and the importance it invokes in our psyche in terms of confidence. If that's the case, I could have used the designer robe when waking up from surgery. It may have made me feel more comfortable with myself. <laughs> if you've had any types of setback, let's say you lost a job or went through a bad breakup or perhaps you had surgery, you understand the mental barriers involved with that bounce back. At some point, the scars heal and the pain wanes away, but that mental part persists. Am I as effective as I was before? Will I be able to do the same things that I did before? These are just a few questions that pop up throughout the healing process, and that uncertainty spilled into my everyday life. I was not my best self. People show up as an entire essence of themselves when they are confident, when they walk into a room and know they have the room's attention. Like the first day of school. I remember, <laughs> I remember when I went shopping for the new school year, how I looked for the first day of school outfit first. That night before the first day of school, I made sure my pants and shirt were ironed. I hadn't even worn the shoes yet but passed the wet cloth on them to make sure they were clean, all because I knew I was going to show up and show out. That same excitement we had as a kid to present the best version of ourselves carries with us as we grow into adults. It's the small things. We don't think much about getting dressed, but what we wear has the power to elevate our confidence. As a men's wardrobe stylist, I see this pretty often. For example, I had a client who was preparing to interview for his dream job. He says, Chris, I just need a new suit to get this over with. I won't get a job anyways. He had everything he needed on paper. I knew he just needed that excitement pulled out of him. So we tried on a variety of suits and shirts and ties. And as we got closer and closer to his look, I can see his eyes sparkle. He was more and more sure in himself with every look in the mirror. A few days later, he came back to me after killing that first interview, eager for the following style session. Then he smashed that second interview, and before he knew it, he had found his confidence and had his dream job. Guys, I can relate. To help others realize the healing effect of one's own style, I had to know it for myself. Not only did it help me with my confidence, it helped me cope with loss. As I was recovering from surgery and 
dealing with self-esteem issues back in 2011, 2012, my little sister was fighting cancer. She didn't make it. This threw me into a deep, deep depressive state. My wardrobe naturally became darker and baggier. I didn't want to stand out or bring any attention to myself. Those dingy clothes brought with them a gloomy, dark cloud over my head everywhere I went. I was never in the mood. I didn't permit myself to be happy. I was finally sick and tired of being sick and tired and thought back to how my mom would excite her clients by stitching a new garment for them. So I brightened up my wardrobe, you know, piece by piece. Light slowly started to crack through that cloud over my head until things were bright for me again. Believe it or not, color plays an influential role in many aspects of our lives. We're introduced to color psychology as soon as we enter the world. Girls wear pink and boys wear blue. The colors we choose can be dominated by our emotions. The lesser known reality is that according to research, 86% of buyers say color is the most critical factor to consider when purchasing clothing or products. When it comes to changing your mood or sending a certain message through clothing, color and fashion has a comparable influence. As a result, it implies that you have complete control over your own surroundings. This is one of the reasons why it is such an important tool for getting around in the world, whether socially or professionally. It conveys that you are organized, the type of person you want to be around for nearly any work. Thus, even before you speak or offer credentials, your style is convincing. How we dress and decide to express ourselves is our superpower. An investment into your style is an investment into your mental health. A quick look in the mirror saying, man, I look good, <laughs> is the difference between status quo and next level success. Finding my style was my healer. It pulled me out of the depths of self-shaming after having back surgery. It helped me turn my life around after experiencing a significant loss. Self-confidence, it comes from within. It starts by healing that person in the mirror. Style healed me. So I challenge you. On days you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, I challenge you. Put on your favorite outfit. You'll see that you can stitch hope into your everyday life by simply finding your style and stepping as your best self. Thank you.